Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, we are going to continue our Langchain series and in this video, we are going to use Llama 3 model, which is a complete open source model and develop an amazing document Q&A application. And trust me guys, the kind of results that I have specifically got from this document Q&A by using this Llama 3 model, I think it is amazing. The output that you'll be able to get superbly fabulous, fast, the reason why I'm saying fast, because I am also going to use nothing but Grok, right? So I've already given you the brief information about Grok, but anyhow, in this video also, I'll be to showing you. In Grok, you'll be able to find many, many open source models like Gamma 7B, Llama 2 70 billion, Llama, Llama 3 70 billion. See, Llama 2, again, it is decommissioned because Llama 3 has already come over here. Llama 3, 8 billion parameters and Mistral. So here, I will try to show you with Llama 3 and just try to show you how the performance is and how accurately you'll be able to get the results. Just to give you a clear idea, like how the results are. See, this is just a demo. From a PDF, I asked what was the private health insurance coverage by state in 2022. And here you could see how quickly, like uh, how quickly after I probably execute the code, you'll be able to see it. But over here, you'll be able to see you are getting the accurate results. Along with that, based on the document similarity search, what all results you're specifically getting, that all will be also displayed. So we are going to develop this application over here. Uh, again, our main aim is to learn in such a way that you'll be able to understand all these things. And we will go ahead with respect to step by step how to implement this particular project. Again, over here, we are going to use this Llama 3. In the upcoming videos, I'm also going to show you how you can actually perform fine tuning with Llama 3. So let me go ahead and proceed with our code. Again, from basics, I will be writing as usual just to show you what is a problem statement. So here I have a folder which is called as US Census. Again, this project is a continuation of the Langchain series project itself. So all the code materials will be given in the description of this particular video. So here you have around four PDFs file. We are going to read this specific PDF. We are going to perform embedding everything as such. And then with the help of Llama 3 by creating a prompt template and probably using the Llama 3 LLM model, we are going to probably query anything from here and get the output, okay? So this is my folder and in my I'll be writing my code app.py. So first of all, as usual, we will go ahead and import. So import streamlet as ST. Uh, obviously, we are going to develop this end-to-end -end application with the help of streamlet. And apart from this, import OS. Okay, before I go ahead, please make the video. I'll keep a target of 1000 likes. Do it. You know, yaar kar do yaar. Kar do yaar, okay? So I know you are not doing all of the videos you're seeing. I'm getting almost 10 to 15K views in almost every video that I develop in Generative AI, but you are not liking it. You are not commenting it. I don't know why. Uh, can't help, okay? But yes, I, I, I'm also tired asking you all to please go ahead and like, share with all your friends and all, but it is up to you, okay? So now let me go ahead and write from Langchain. Langchain, but don't worry. You do whatever you want, but I am going to continuously upload all the videos, okay, with the same speed, right? So import uh, chat grok. So I'm going to specifically use chat grok. If you don't know about chat grok, so grok specifically provides you all these open source APIs itself. I will be showing you how you can create your API key. We will go ahead and create that particular API key in our environment variable. Use that key over there and read it over here also, okay? So this is uh, the another library that we are going to use. Uh, we are going to use one embedding technique. Uh, you can also use Olama embedding, but here I'm preferring to go ahead with OpenAI embeddings. The reason is very simple because OpenAI em embeddings is amazing. You get a quick, good results with respect to any kind of application that you develop. Uh, yes, there are also some open source uh, models like in Hugging Face and all, which you can also perform the embeddings. But again, my Langchain playlist, I have almost shown each and everything. Now the next uh, library that I'm going to probably uh, upload or load it over here is nothing but langchain.textsplitter, recursive character text splitter. So if I have the documents, I want to probably convert that documents into smaller chunks, I can use this recursive text character text splitter. Along with this, two more libraries that I'm going to import. One is nothing but create stuff document chain. I've already explained what this is for, okay? And then I'm also going to use chat prompt template, okay? Um, one more couple of more libraries so initially we'll import all the libraries over here one is the create retrieval chain so that it will be you'll be able to create the entire retrieval chain itself this document chain and retrieval chain will work 
together right along with this i'm going to use fires embedding uh, for the vector store uh, that is what i'm going to specifically use um, one more library that we will go ahead and write from lang chain um, underscore community underscore community uh, dot document loaders i'm going to import py pdf uh, I'm going to import document loaders. I'm going to import PyPDF directory. So this will basically help me to read all the documents from the folder itself. Uh, now let's proceed and let's probably load all the requirement, all the ENV keys that I specifically require. Two ENV keys I require. One is for the Grok and one is for the OpenAI. So let's see how to do that. So guys, now let's go ahead and import uh, all the necessary keys from our environment variables. So for this also, I'm going to import one library which is called as from dot env from dot env import load underscore dot env okay uh the reason we are using this is to basically load all the environment variables so here we have this and uh, along with this what i am actually going to do i'm going to basically create my load the grok api key and API key of Grok and I would also require an open AI API key. Okay. Already I've shown you how to create those API key, but if you probably go ahead and see my environment variable, all these API keys will be visible. So I've already done that for your sake. I will just show you how to probably uh, create a Grok API key. So just go to HTTPS Grok.com. And if you go ahead and click on Grok cloud in the bottom. So here you will be able to see this console from here. You just go ahead and click on API screen. And just click on the create api key so once you get this particular api key you can give a name and copy this particular api key itself okay and this is the api key that i will also be using okay i've already done that so please do it from your step otherwise just see my previous tutorials there also i have actually shown you how to do it okay then uh as usual uh, there are two api keys that we need to import so i'm going to specifically use this one is the os.environment open api key i'm going to say os.getenv Along, uh, along with that, I'm also going to use os.environment of uh, Grok API key, right? So uh, Grok API key will also be used over here with respect to that. Okay, here some couple of changes will be happening. So I will just go ahead and write get env and this will basically be set to my over here. Okay, along with this, what I can actually do uh, once I have set this Grok API key, I will be using the same API key whenever I initialize Grok. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, probably uh, go ahead with the next step. So over here, we have already load, loaded each and everything. Uh, so uh, here I will go ahead and write st.title since we are going to use this as streamlet title. And here I'm going to basically write chat grok demo, chat grok with llama, llama 3 demo. But llama 3 is very powerful, guys. Okay, llama 3 demo. Along with this, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to create my LLM model, which will be nothing by, by using chat grok template or chat grok library. I have to probably use the grok API key over here. So I will write grok underscore API underscore key. Okay. And this will basically be initialized to my grok API key. Okay. Uh, the second parameter I really need to give is my model underscore name. And as we have already seen the model number or model name will be llama three. And you can all again go to the website and check it out. 8B. 8192 okay so here is the model number that we are going to specifically use this will basically be my llm model the next thing uh, again for the context we really need to create a chat prompt template so again we will go ahead and initialize our prompt so this is our prompt prompt uh, chat prompt template dot prompt from templates answer the question based on the provided context only please provide the most accurate response based on the question context so this will basically be the context over here and question with respect to this particular input, whatever input I specifically give. And this will basically be my entire prompt template. OK, now let's quickly go ahead and create my fields so that I can actually ask any question. So here I'm going to write prompt one is equal to st dot text underscore input. OK, and here I'm saying input enter your question from the doc from documents okay done so here i'm going to just put my questions whatever questions that i have 
I will basically be put it in putting uh, in this particular prompt. I will also go ahead and create one button. Okay, so I'll write if ht dot button. Okay, and this button will be responsible in reading all the PDFs file from this particular folder. See this folder, right? US Census. This folder, it will read it. It will probably do the. It will take the entire PDF documents. Then it will convert that into check chunks. It will convert that into vector. Store it in a vector DB. All that particular task, I will use this specific button to do. So here I'm going to basically write documents embedding. Okay, so this will basically be the name of my button. Okay, the button that I'm going to specifically use. And here I'm going to create my retrieval. Let me go ahead and just call one function. Let's say I'm going to basically say vector embeddings. Okay. So this will basically be my function that I'm actually going to call. Still, this function is not created. I will go ahead and create it and we'll do all the step by step, whatever process we specifically do. First of all, we'll read the documents, then we'll go to the next step and all convert that documents into chunks by recursive character and many more things. Right. And then finally, this is done. I will go ahead and write ht dot write. And let me just go ahead and write over here. Vector store DB is ready. Vector store DB is ready. Okay. So done, this is done with respect to this. Now let me go ahead and create my function, definition, vector embeddings, vector embedding. Now vector embedding over here, uh, what we are going to do over here, step by step, all the performing things we really need to do. Now see, in vector embedding, first of all, what I will do, I will go ahead and create my embeddings. Uh, so let me go ahead and write embedding, embeddings, okay. And this will be initialized to my open AI embeddings. Now understand all these embeddings will be further used in other places, right? It will be used in other places. So it is better that we store all these things in some sessions. Okay. So here I'm going to write st dot session. Okay. St dot session underscore state. Okay. Dot embeddings. Okay. And this will basically be initialized to my open AI embeddings. Okay. After that, again, I will go ahead and write st dot session underscore state. Okay. Session underscore state dot. Okay. So again, the spelling mistake is wrong. And because of that, my productivity is reducing, right? So dot loader, I'm going to use loader over here. And with respect to this particular loader, I'm going to use pi PDF directory loader and give my folder, the folder that is nothing but us underscore census, the same folder that where all the PDFs are probably present. Okay. So this is done. Uh, we have also set up our loader itself. And then what we are going to do from this particular loader, we are going to load all the documents. So again, I'm going to write session, uh, sorry, st dot session. Uh, let me just copy it from here. Okay, st dot session underscore state dot documents whatever documents i'm going to specifically get this will basically be present inside st dot session state dot loader dot load okay so we are going to load from this particular loader itself and again i'm going to save all this thing in session so that wherever i require anything i will just call that particular sessions now you know after loading all the documents we will try to split that with the help of recursive character text splitter right and then again whatever chunks that we get we also need to save it in a session so here what i'm writing see st dot session state dot text splitter then here will be my recursive character splitter right everything after this text splitter will be that after text splitter we can specifically go ahead and use our uh, uh, the entire text splitter itself right here we are initializing it it is a recursive character text splitter and the chunk size will be thousand chunk overlap will be 200 okay so next one will be that I will use the same text splitter and uh, let me go ahead and copy this two line of code. So here what I'm doing, I'm using text splitter dot split documents and I'm going to use this particular documents. The first 50 documents I'm specifically going to use. Let me make it to 20 so that my process will complete quickly. And then after this, what we are going to do over here is that we are going to convert all these final documents into vectors by using this fires. Okay, step by step whatever process we have followed in all our previous project, right? So this is my data ingestion step. Okay. Just to show it to give you an idea. This is basically my document loading. Okay. Document loading. This step that you probably see over here is my chunk chunk creation. Okay. Which is required because we need to convert the documents into chunk. 
here the entire splitting is basically happening and finally here is my vector store that is getting created by using open ai embeddings right open ai embedding so all the comments i'm specifically writing so that you can refer it at any point of time now once this is done once this is done uh, this is all the steps that you really need to do what i will do is that in this session state we will go ahead and because at the end of the day i require this vectors right so what i will do over here i will write if vector if vector not in st dot session underscore state okay if it is not present in this then i will have to probably re uh, run all these things again so i will just press tab and put inside this particular if 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 block okay so this is my entire vector embedding so as soon as i probably click this button so this vector embedding will happen and everything over here will happen and save it in our session state so finally we'll be able to get the vectors now in order to read that particular vectors and perform q a what i can actually do over here is that i will go ahead and create my prompt okay the prompt is over here so i will go ahead and write if prompt one okay prompt one this is a really solid project that i have thought of guys so please go ahead and like it if you like it okay so import time i'm also going to import time and we'll also read the timings right how fast it is so i'll write start dot time dot process underscore time so it is going to start with this time now you know that you have this particular vectors right now we can take this particular vectors and we can create a document chain right now what i'm going to write i'm going to write my document chain document chain and this will basically create my stuff document chain and in the stuff document chain what I'll, i require llm and prompt understand why you require this because based on the context right and this stuff document chain will be responsible in returning the context and we are going to combine each and everything as we go ahead right then we have our retriever now the retriever is something which is an interface on top of uh you can on the top of a vector database right so here you know my vector database is available in st dot session state dot vectors okay dot vectors and here i'm going to write as underscore retriever okay so this as underscore retriever will basically this 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 variable will be an interface to this particular uh vector database itself right Finally, I also have to create my retrieval chain because at the end of the day, we need to run all these things in a chain format. So finally, we are using this create retrieval chain and I've also explained you what is the importance of this in the LangChain playlist. And inside this, I need to give my retriever and the second parameter that I really need to give is my document chain. Okay, done. Perfect. <coughs> now, <coughs> in order to call with respect to any question that i ask i need to invoke this retrieval chain so i'll write retrieval chain dot invoke okay invoke so here one more thing that i probably see you know the steps will again will need not be repeated again and again right so what i can do i can put this completely outside of this itself after import time so that it does not have to repeat each and every time so i will write shift tab shift tab done right so retrieval chain dot invoke now i'm going to invoke it okay what i'm going to invoke based on my prompt my prompt specifically what i'm giving over there it is nothing but input and this will be initialized to my prompt one whatever thing are basically coming from this particular text box okay perfect uh here uh uh, then what we can basically do is that we can write our response that we are specifically getting okay and this will basically be saved in some response variable okay and i can paste this particular response and first of all i will close the timer over here so timer dot process minus start and then we are going to write the entire answer of the prompt right whatever answer i'm going to get from the document okay so this is for the vector embedding this is for this but one more thing i specifically require is some metadata information other page content or other context related content uh, that needs to be displayed over there so for this uh, what i am actually going to do uh, inside this particular prompt and please try to see this code because this code was earlier also used right so i am saying that please go ahead with respect to every context in the response and try to display all the page content you'll understand the importance of this because it will be showing you from where or data where or data from the documents uh, is getting retrieved right that reference will also be given okay 
Now perfect, I think everything uh, I have implemented it over here. Understand how I have divided. First of all, I imported each and everything. I've uh, loaded both the environment variables. Along with that, I have used Llama 3 model. Prompt template is defined. Vector embedding is something to create all your session states with respect to every task that you specifically do. Read the PDF, load it, uh, divide that into chunks, you know, uh, split that documents and convert that into vector store. And then I have used a separate button for creating the vector store and separate button basically to do the Q&A that is basically required from the documents. Now quickly let's save this and let's run this. I hope everything should run fine. If it is not running, some error will definitely come. That is what I feel all the time. And it is good to have an error at the end of the day, right? So I will write CD grok, okay? And here I'm going to write streamlet run app.py. I think it should run. Perfect. Now the first thing what I'm actually going to do over here is that, uh, okay st dot session shares have no attribute do you forget to initialize let's see where is that error oops let's see that particular error some key error is there so if if vector vectors if vectors it should be vectors okay and here also we have used vectors okay perfect now i think it should run always rerun Okay, still it is not working. Okay, uh, okay, still it is showing errors. Uh, vectors as retriever, sts.session has no attributes. Did you forget to initialize? Okay, uh, let me see. Don't worry, if error is there, we will try to fix that error. I'm not going to edit this particular code, each and everything as such. Okay, so this, it is better that we move it inside this particular prompt, but before that only, it is asking for the reference. So let's run less inside this. Okay. This is how you solve an error. I'm also showing you that. Now let's click on this. If once I click on this document embedding, the task will be that it will probably read from the entire documents, all the documents. It will divide into chunks. It will convert into a vectors and your vector store DB will be ready. So once I click this, you'll be able to see one message in some type that your vector DB is ready. Okay. Let's see. Okay, and uh, with respect to the code also, I will just go ahead and show it to you right now. Any error is there or not? Okay, so this was the previous error that we got. Okay, your vector DB store DB is ready. Now I will open one PDF. Okay, and this PDF, uh, this is one of the PDF that is present over there. Okay, uh, let's ask this question. What is the public health insurance coverage by state in this one? Okay, so I will say what is the public health insurance cover by state i will go ahead and execute this so here you can see in 2020 13 state saw the increases so amazing right and if i probably show you the code right if i show you the code response time is just 0.125 just imagine how fast this lpu inferencing engine is and with the help of that particular api how quickly are you able to get the results right now here whether this answer is correct or not 37.2 percent somewhere it should be there so you can see over here um 37 34 34 percent is there but if you want to see the references from where it has taken okay because understand from all this data it is summarizing it is giving you the results see over here changes in public coverage from 21 to 22 37.2 percent okay so let's search for this okay somewhere this should be given see so here it is public coverage this one uh, from 37 to percent right all these things are there let's let's ask this okay let's uh, let's see some more questions for anything that you ask what is health insurance coverage okay i will just go ahead and ask this question again and press enter because one time i've created my entire vector store db right and here you can see according to the provided context health insurance cover refers to the state level estimates of health insurance using american community survey and this is the same similarity search here you can see this brief present state level net so from the similarity search all this information has been picked up isn't it amazing right so i hope you like this particular video this was my entire end-to-end -end project uh, and yes uh, keep on rocking keep on learning uh, this was it from my side i hope you like this particular video uh, if you like it please make sure that you subscribe Press the bell notification icon and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you, Wonderwall. Take care. Bye-bye.